Hey there. So I modeled, rigged, and animated a gun in Blender and brought it into Unity. If you don't feel like watching this time lapse, you can use the timestamps I added to skip ahead to the rigging or animation parts or just the part where I imported it into Unity. Don't be fooled by this time lapse. This was three hours worth of my life and I just skipped the bits where I was just sitting there staring at the screen trying to figure out how to best model the next part. I also chopped away about an hour's worth of footage with me just trying to model the barrel. I feel like repetition is key and I'm getting better at doing it so if you're struggling and you feel like you're stuck just keep at it. I'm sure you'll get there if you just keep practicing. The key things I learned from this attempt at modeling a gun though was how to use proportional edit. I feel like that's something that will take you a long way if you can properly understand its function. I've also come to realize that a lot of 3D modeling is actually just problem solving, just staring at the problem, trying to figure out how to best get the shape into what you want it to be. And I know that might seem obvious, but if you watch other people model stuff, it seems like they just know what they're doing and it's kind of intimidating when you get to the same place and you're just stuck. Another important thing to understand is how the thing you're modeling actually works. For example, I ended up watching about 10 videos of people just shooting a pistol so that I could try and understand how this thing actually works, how the mechanism functions. And in the middle of modeling, I went back to rewatch these videos and sometimes animations because it just helps you grasp how the parts you're modeling are gonna fit together. Okay, okay, I'll stop rambling now. I'll catch you guys when we do the rigging.
All right, cool, let's rig this thing. To start, let's shift A to add an armature. We'll add a single bone. We'll position it at somewhere in the handle of the gun. We can then tab into edit mode and shift D to duplicate it. And we'll position this bone roughly in the center of the slider. We can shift D to duplicate again, and then we'll place this bone around the center of the trigger. We'll shift D again to duplicate, and we'll place this bone in the middle of the hammer. Finally, we'll shift D to duplicate a bone and put it in the middle of the barrel. With the armature selected, we'll head into pose mode. And then how I like to do this is to select the object from the view layer and then select the bone, then control P to pair into the bone. Now, if we rotate our bone, we will see our trigger move as well. We'll repeat this process for all the other objects. Once we're happy with parenting our objects to our bones, we'll need to parent the bones to each other in sensible ways, so that if we rotate the handle, for example, the rest of the gun moves with it as if they're joined. In edit mode, we'll select the child bone, then the parent bone, hit Control P, and say Keep Offset. Now, in pose mode, if we rotate the parent bone, the child bone moves with it. So we'll go ahead and create sensible relationships with the rest of the bones. In preparation for animating, we'll bring the armature to the front of the viewport display. You can do so in the viewport display settings and just click in front with the armature selected. Another useful preparation step is to name all your bones so that when you import it into Unity, you can tell which bone is which. Once we're done renaming all our goodies, we can go ahead and open the dope sheet and we'll open up the action editor. We'll create a new action and we'll call it shoot. To start, we'll select all our bones by pressing A. Then we'll press I to insert the location and rotation of each of the bones. With our trigger selected, we'll move to around keyframe 4 and we'll rotate it downward as if it's being squeezed. Then we'll hit I and insert the rotation. I hit location and rotation, but you can just do the rotation. Then with the hammer selected, we'll duplicate its original position to keyframe 4. And once the trigger reaches the end of its squeeze animation, we want the hammer to flick forward. And I've noticed I've made a grave mistake. The rotation point of the hammer is incorrect, which means it's rotating at the top instead of the bottom. To rectify this, I'm going to have to unparent the bone from the object, rotate it, and then reparent it. So I'm going to hit fast forward whilst I do that. Moral of the story though, pay attention to the mechanism of the thing you're modeling. Cool, but now that that's fixed, we can go ahead and move to around keyframe 6. And when we hit that keyframe, we'll just rotate the hammer up as if it's been flicked that way. So we're happy with the position, we'll hit I to insert the rotation. And then if we play it back, we can see once we hit the end of the trigger animation, the hammer flicks forward. Next, we'll select the slider and duplicate its initial position up to keyframe 6. And then at around keyframe 8, we want the slider to be all the way back as it's been flicked back as a result of the hammer's animation. Once it's in a position we're happy with, we'll insert its location. Playing this animation back, I've noticed that the hammer is attached to the slider, which is not logical. So we need to unparent the hammer from the slider and parent it to the base bone instead. With that fixed, we want the hammer to reset as the slider passes over it. So at around keyframe 8, we'll copy its original position and paste it in there. Next, we'll need the slider to return to its rest position after it's reached the back end of its previous animation. So we'll hop to keyframe 11 and paste its default position in there. Hang it back, we have a smooth little firing animation. And the last thing we'll want to do is keep the trigger in its position up until around keyframe 8 and then snap it back to its default position at around keyframe 9. This is the result, which I think looks pretty good. The last thing you might want to do to top it off is to add a little bit of recoil, but that really depends on your application and if your gun's going to be held by a character, the recoil will probably be dealt with by the character animation instead. To set this up for Unity, you want to apply any location, rotation, and scales. And you want to rotate the gun negative 90 degrees on the x-axis. Apply the rotation and then rotate it back 90 degrees on the x-axis. Need to do this so that when we import it into Unity, it's facing the correct direction. I figured this out watching a cool YouTube video. I'll link it down in the description below. 
We can export it as FBX and then drag it into Unity. I've made a couple of backups as I was modeling and animating this thing. That's why there are three animations. So we'll just isolate one by holding Ctrl and pressing D to duplicate it out of the FBX. And we can head up to the animation tab of the FBX settings and disable the import animation setting. This isn't necessary, but I just like to keep things organized and not have duplicates all over the place. I've gone ahead and popped this into an animations folder and created an animation controller. We'll pop the animation controller onto our gun object, which we created by dragging our model into the scene view. In our animation controller, we'll create a new state for shooting and assign our shoot animation to the state. We'll also just name the state something more useful than new state. We'll double click the state and we'll turn on loop time. This will make the animation loop. There is an issue, and that is, if we move the position of our gun and play our animation back, it resets the gun's position. Obviously, we don't want this, so one way we can fix this is to add an empty game object, we'll reset its position, and we'll call it gun parent, and then we'll place our gun object inside of the parent. This will prevent any repositioning on playing the animation. There we go, a modeled, rigged, and animated gun in Blender and Unity. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to